again. Here at Sensible Investing TV, we are extremely skeptical about the value of active fund management. There is a place for active managers, but all the evidence suggests only a tiny fraction of them outperform the market with any meaningful degree of consistency. And they are almost impossible to identify in advance. Over time, the effect of compounding means the charges active managers levy make such a significant dent in our long-term returns that it makes much more sense to invest in passive funds which are significantly cheaper. Now a report by the independent pensions consultancy Hyman's Robertson for the UK government has endorsed precisely what we've been saying. The report was commissioned by the Department for Communities and Local Government in response to concerns that the local government pension scheme has neither been serving the best interests of the council employees who belong to it, nor offering value for money for the taxpayer. The report's findings are truly shocking. First, let's look at asset management costs. The report's authors found that in 2012, these amounted to £790 million, the vast majority of which was paid to active managers. Using passive equity and bond funds instead of active ones would save the taxpayer about £230 million a year. There'd also be a saving of another £190 million a year in turnover costs. In other words, the costs associated with actively buying and selling shares and bonds. The report also found that alternative investments account for less than 10% of total assets, but 40% of total fees, reducing the use of funds of funds with their multiple layers of charges would save an additional £240 million. That means a total saving of £660 million a year. Now, that's all very well, you might say, but the whole point of paying for active management is that you want to outperform the market. Surely the money spent on charges is more than recouped by that extra performance. Unfortunately, it's not. As you'd expect, over the past 10 years, some active managers used by the LGPS have outperformed. But the report found, and I quote, there is no evidence that in aggregate the scheme has outperformed regional equity markets. In fact, in many cases, active funds have been trounced by passive ones. For example, over 10 years, passive US equity funds delivered average returns of 2.6%, as opposed to 1.7% a year delivered by active funds. Passive Japanese equity funds recorded average returns of 2.6% a year compared to 2.0% for active. And remember, these returns don't take into account the impact of investment charges. When fees are taken into consideration, the report found there's an overwhelming case for the DCLG to dispense with active fund managers altogether, exclusively use passive funds and administer the scheme itself. This report, in short, is a damning indictment of the fund management industry. Given the close links between the industry and the Conservative Party in particular, the government deserves credit for putting the report in the public domain. This is a debate we need to be having, and notwithstanding its reliance on the advertising revenue that the big fund managers provide, it's a debate the financial media ought to be encouraging. Trustees of not just public pension funds, but private ones as well, need to learn the lessons from this report. And so do you, the investor. However attracted you might be to a particular fund because of an advert you've seen or an article you've read, the fact remains that after costs, active fund management is a negative sum game. Before you commit to it, ask yourself, how certain am I that the manager I choose will outperform the market? And remember, it's a mathematical certainty that after costs, the average manager won't. Until next time, goodbye.